Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. So I had a Twitter request. Someone contacted me on my uh, Maya Tool Belt Twitter account uh, with a request on how to model a bookshelf. I figure that's a pretty simple request. I don't mind doing that. And it also wanted to make sure you guys knew if you did have any kind of questions or actual requests for video content, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me through Twitter or email or through the channel, however, or commenting on a video, this video even. Uh, you can do that and I can definitely uh, do that as soon as I can. So the bookshelf image he sent me, I wanted to make sure I uh, was making the kind of bookshelf he wanted to see. I'll put it up here in post. Relatively simple shape. Uh, going about it is not too hard, but the main thing to think about though is what is the bookshelf uh, prop for, right? There's two main things it could be for, is for a real-time video game or a pre-rendered uh, video, like a, a Pixar movie, like Toy Story or something, or like a video game like uh, you know, The Sims or something like that if you're going to have a bookshelf. So depending on which uh, medium you're going to be creating this for, you have to make it with that medium in mind. Does that make sense? So let's say, for example, you're making this for a Pixar movie. If you're doing that, it's pretty easy. You just kind of put it together like you would a real bookshelf, making all these different shapes. So uh, I'm going to create a cube, and I'm going to just kind of start like so. We'll call that the base of the bookshelf, the bottom. I'm just going to center it on my grid. I find uh, working off of the grid to be a lot uh, easier and you're better able to do different things that require symmetry and so on if you're using the grid as a guide. And right now my scale is 111. If I go down here, my width, height, and depth here, I can, if it matters, you can adjust the width and height and depth to be accurate to a real object. If you actually go out with a tape measure and measure it, you can do that. Or if you want to just eyeball it, that works too. So for example, I might just make these some nice round numbers. Make the depth be 5 units and the height 1.5 units and the width I have here is 9 units. And I might actually make that 10 units, like that. Okay. And then uh, we can just kind of control D to duplicate this cube up. And I'm going to scale it much thinner. This will be the top surface of the bottom shelf. So I'll move it right here. And I'm going to grab the face on the outside here and just kind of pull it out because it kind of sticks out a little bit, like so. And now, what I would do if this was for, you know, like I said, a pre rendered film kind of project video that you're making, I would bevel these edges so they're not so sharp. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and Bevel. You'll see my little uh, poly bevel help window here have come up. And you can left click and drag and adjust a fraction to adjust how thick that bevel is. And if you hold down Control, it will adjust it much uh, in smaller increments. So it can be a little easier to control if you were holding Control while you left click and drag on these uh, sliders here. So a little bit of a bevel on that outside edge like that. And the reason why I didn't bevel these other uh, corners is because they won't be visible in the final. You'll notice in the image, this left and right sides of these cubes are going to be covered by the outside surface of the left and right side of the bookshelf. Okay. So now that I have this one, I can duplicate this for the rest of the shelves. So I can control D and I'll move it up here. And how far up you go is really just depending on how big your bookshelf needs to be. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but if you want to go a certain increment up, you can. I'm going to type in 7 units. If I hit Shift D, it will duplicate the next one up the same amount. Okay, so we have an equal distance. And this would be my two shelves that are in the middle. I'm not going to duplicate it again for the top of the bookshelf, because I want the top of the bookshelf to be a little bit different, because it's not the actual... Uh, surface of a shelf is the actual top of the bookshelf. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my bottom cube down here since it's a pretty simple shape. No bevels have been done to this cube, which is why it's a good one to use for this purpose. I'm going to control D to duplicate it. I'm going to move it out here. 
and scale it really thin. And this will be my outside surface of the bookshelf. I'm going to scale it out a little bit. So we've got a little bit of thickness. So we have some, it comes out further here. And now I can grab this face and move it up. This will be up here. Okay. And now what I will do is grab these all four edges and I'll bevel these since they will be visible outside of the bookshelf. You can see them easily. So again, edit mesh, bevel. And I'll adjust that fraction setting like so. And I've noticed I might need to pull this out a little bit further because I want it to come out further from the actual shelving units. So it comes out like this. So there's a bit of a separation right here. So they're not, like before, they're a little too close together right here. I'd like to get more space through here. So I'll pull that out like that. Okay. So now that I have that one, I could control D and duplicate it over and move it, the duplicate over here to this side. Like so. I can control D again, and this time I'll rotate it. Now one trick, actually one of my students uh, told me about that I had not realized this handy shortcut. If I go to rotate, my rotate tool, hold down the J key and then rotate it, it will rotate on 15 degree increments, which I did not realize you could hold down J to do that. So that's a good trick of the trade that I learned just recently. So hold down J and I can rotate it exactly 90 degrees and this will be the back of my bookshelf. So I'll position it like so. Then I can grab these edges over here and move them out like this. And I think they're going to stay behind the side pieces so they're going to kind of be butted against it like this. And if you want to intersect them a little bit that's okay in this case because more than likely that intersection right here is going to be against the wall, right? More than likely you're not going to have a bookcase out in the open where you can walk behind it. More than likely. So little imperfections like the little intersections and such, if they're hidden in your scene and you don't see them, it's not that big of a deal. Alright, so now what I'll do is I'll grab that bottom piece again, since again it has no bevels, it's just a straightforward cube. I'll duplicate it, move it up here, and this will be my top surface. I'll shrink it down to more closely match the rest of it. Put it into place and scale it to fit. And then this will have a slight overlap based on my reference image. And this front face needs to come out a little further. So I'll grab it and pull it out here. Now for this one, what I want to do is actually bevel the entire thing because it's very visible. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, Bevel the whole object. You can adjust my fractions here to get the bevel sized the way I want. So it looks like this. And there we go. Now it's all in pieces right now. So if you wanted to, you could go to mesh combine or you could control G to group it all together if I do control G it groups it you'll see there it says items group successfully and if I open up the outliner which is under Windows outliner let's move this into place you can see here I have a group you can double click this and rename it bookshelf and if I expand the group you can see all my little pieces that are associated with it, but if I select the group itself I can move the entire bookshelf. Or, let me undo all that, undo the grouping, there we go. So here in my outliner you can see all my little cubes. Now if I go to mesh combine, <laughs> it combined all those objects together. So now I can move it all at one and you see there is P cube 9. Now all these things you'll notice are still there but their little icon changed that's because those are history items 
So this object has history after I combine them all together. I can go back and select each of these little history items to adjust each piece individually still even though the object has been combined together. And if you are happy with the object and don't need that history anymore, you can go to edit, here it is, edit, delete by type, history. So we're deleting the history, so we're going to remove all that stuff. So nothing really happened when I deleted history, but if I go back to the outliner, You can see here now I have P cube 9 again, and I do have these objects still in the scene, but when I move them, you'll notice that there's nothing there. So those are what you'd call trash objects. That happens every so often, and the way you can clean that up, if you go to File, Optimize Scene Size, and it will tell you this action is not undoable, so be careful. Hit OK, and you'll see that it cleaned up my file. All those little trash things have been deleted automatically when I optimize my scene size. So now I have my object that has been combined together and it's all put together. So the uh, request was just a modeling tutorial. He didn't really need any kind of texturing or anything, but this is how you could model that bookshelf. Here, let me put this over here so you can see kind of a side by side. So you kind of model this bookshelf just by putting it together with, you know, really simple cube shapes and you can bevel the edges so you get a nice uh, rounding to them so it's not too hard edged and you can go from there. Hope that helped. If you have any further questions please feel free to comment in the video uh, and if anybody else has any requests please feel free. I'm open to that of course. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you later.